Welcome to the Geek 101 Podcast, episode 222. Who is the Joker? You ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? I'm Ariel Rada. And I'm Andy Bowman. And today we are talking about the Joker as a character, not the film. I haven't watched the film. Andy, did you watch the movie? Not yet. Um, but I'm not going to watch the film. So instead, we're going to take a look at who's the Joker, what makes the Joker um, a character, what makes him a good character, what makes him a well-known character. We're going to try to talk about all those things, uh, a quick um, geek royalty. Um, but before we do that, we have two quick pieces of news. Uh, the first one, Andy, is that Rick and Morty Season 4 is coming and it's only, we're only getting five episodes. I don't think we were clear on whether or not it'll be the season's only five episodes or just we're getting five episodes first. Yeah, I I don't know. All we can say is that it was announced that starting November 10th, we will be getting five new episodes of Rick and Morty. Yeah. And, um, are you are you a big Rick and Morty fan? Yes, I am. Um, also, just remember, this is uh, part of the 70-episode deal that is over an unspecified number of seasons. So, you know, we're, we're still getting 70 episodes of Rick and Morty. We're just don't know if this is going to be all of season four. Yeah. But like you said off air, um, let them take their time. Let them pace it. Well, as long as, you know, Dan Harmon is Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland are, you know, willing to do it. Uh, let them take their time. Let them have good episodes. What if we got five great episodes instead of five really good ones? And then like five fine episodes. Right. Um, yeah. But I th- oh, what? Ha- okay. Here's I'm reading the article now. It arrives on November 10th, and that there's going to be a probably a break for Thanksgiving because I think the show comes out on Thursdays, and then and then a, a break till the new year is what they are, what people are theorizing. Okay. So, yeah, I'm 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 fine. I'm right. I'm good with this. Um, my only problem with Rick and Morty is the same problem I have with the Joker. People tend to like it for the wrong reasons uh, or like the character, like more like Rick rather for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, also like I would much rather like uh, Rick and Morty, particularly the ceiling is very, very high for uh, a, you know, a good episode of Rick and Morty. However, like the middling, it, it just feels so disappointing when it, it doesn't completely hit on all cylinders yeah and because we get so few episodes it it is it is frustrating when it's when it's bad it's it's almost like a movie right we're just like like dude we don't get many dc movies can we make them good uh instead of giving us the trash that we mostly have gotten thus far um the next piece of news I think this was confirmed. We're going to talk about it anyway. Rihanna, or Rihanna, actually, I think is how it's pronounced correctly. Rihanna has been cast as Poison Ivy in the upcoming Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson, um, Batman film. Your thoughts, Andy? Okay, first of all, it it's pronounced Bay. Her name <laughs> Bay, is pronounced okay. Bay. Um, okay, so here's, here's the thing. Rihanna, Rihanna, Bay. Not a great actor. No. no. I love almost everything she does, but not a great actor. I am super happy that she might be Poison Ivy. Great. Awesome. You know, she does a good job at acting kind of like she's not human and she has an otherworldly attractiveness to her. Uh-huh. Perfect. Uh, yeah. However, Ariel... This is the first major redhead character who is being cast as an African American actress. Right? There's no. never been any <laughs> other redhead like Dude, uh, sorry. I I went down the uh the rabbit hole on why Rihanna can't play Poison Ivy and I think 
one, it's all stupid. Zendaya was great as Mary Jane. But also... Uh, no, 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 no. Her name was Michelle. Oh, sorry. Michelle Jane. <laughs> that was the that was the dumbest part of all of that. Just make her Mary Jane. That was the part that pissed me off. But go on. Right. Uh, but, yeah. Re- great. I'm so happy for Rihanna. She was... She was passable in Ocean's 8. Um, I never saw her in the last season of uh, Bates Motel. Um, uh, I didn't bother either. I watched the first season and didn't continue. Yeah. Uh, but great. Poison Ivy. Awesome. Uh, I think Batman is, as we'll get into this, is stronger when there's a bunch of villains fighting him at once anyway. Yeah. So, one, Rihanna's not a great actress. A, a lot of people have fan casted poison ivy for um evan rachel wood like she's a great actress she looks the part that'd be great another thing maybe to talk about is that there were a couple of names given in uh in rumors for catwoman um among them ruth nega i think is one Tessa Thompson and Lupita Nyong'o, actresses like that. And I, depending on what the movie's like, like I don't like the thought of all of these like black women, you know, I don't like the thought of like surrounding a bunch of people of color getting their asses beat by Batman, right? Like, am I making sense here? That's not a good look. No. No, um, but do you know who my dream casting for Poison Ivy is, Ariel? Who? Okay, I want you to close your eyes and imagine this. Okay. Uma Thurman. <laughs> Stop. How about, how about, um, uh, how about uh, Seth Rogen? Uh. <laughs> Jonah, <laughs> wait, that's who Jonah Hill's playing. He's playing Catwoman. <laughs> yeah, he's not playing the Penguin. Uh, he's playing Catwoman. Although I would, um, I do think that Poison Ivy... It would be a perfect post credit scene for uh Birds of Prey. Yeah. Yeah, I would like that. Um but like I said, I'm I'm concerned with like either having like a bunch of black women fawning over this white guy or like having this rich white guy <laughs> just beating up a bunch of like black women and people of color. Like it's just not like let's just not do that. Right? Like Let's just think critically for a moment in, in the optics of the situation. Uh, <laughs> just imagine Jeffrey Wright popping up, getting beat down, <laughs> and then Rihanna, and then her getting beat down. Oh, yeah, because Jeffrey Wright is being um, rumored for Commissioner Gordon, right? Right, correct. And it's just like, like don't do not do this. Then then you're, you're like, for some reason, you're just making it this like white centric, white savior story where everyone has all these problems and in comes the rich white man to fix them. Right. Like it's it just, it's just nobody's thinking, right? No, there's no person of color in that room saying, Hey, this might be a bad idea. Um, but that being said, um, you know, we're, we're Probably. actually W's and it's PC gone mad. Uh, Holly Berry suspiciously absent from uh, Catwoman rumors. <laughs> See, I like I don't mind the, the Catwoman thing. Um, I don't even mind like Poison Ivy. I just I just don't I just don't like this kind of optics. Um, well, well, this, yeah. You if know. you're getting if you're basically making it so all the villains are, uh, yeah. No, I I totally understand. Um. Eh, whatever uh we we don't we don't know what they're actually casting them for and we don't even know if those are real so yeah all right but let's talk about our main topic for today the joker okay yeah the joker we're talking about this character andy what do you know about the history of the joker well i know the joker is based on a German expressionistic film called The Man Who Laughs about a man who is permanently uh permanently smiling. Okay. Um it's a silent film. I do not do well with silent films, so I have not seen it. Mm, I haven't seen it either. Um, I do want to take this moment in the podcast to go ahead and remind people that our corrections department is at Manifest Comics. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Every, tweet at him. <laughs> everything we say about the Joker has been vetted by at Manifest Comics. If we say anything wrong, tweet at at Manifest Comics. Yeah, and if you have something really, really venomous to say, go tweet at Mad About Movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but, but seriously. Um, the Joker was part like one of batman's original villains um kind of like this this is just evil clown right this this criminal or not let's not say evil this criminal clown um but what what do you think is required you know like for example for batman right batman you need him to be wealthy so he can have his crazy you know arsenal you need him to be, um, you need him to be an orphan, right? Batman doesn't really work, right? This drive for justice doesn't really work if he's not an orphan, and he needs to be in a city that is just like overrun with corruption and crime. Like those are the the, the quintessential things about Batman. Okay. Um, what are the quintessential things we need with the Joker? Okay, I think first of all, the 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 two big things are he needs to be smart and completely unpredictable. Yeah, right. I think I think those are perfect, perfect attributes. Um, something that I say about the Joker, I think the Joker needs to be able to do things that can only be explained with one, he's the Joker, and two, like this is a comic book, or this is a comic book movie in where this guy should not be able to do this, but like that's the point. It's the response. To Batman, who everyone, uh, maybe not everyone, sane people know, logical people know that Bruce Wayne slash Batman shouldn't be able to do all the things that he does. But it's a, it's a superhero thing. It's a comic book thing. And I oh, think... Ariel? Yeah. Are you saying that Bruce Wayne is Batman? Oh, yeah. yes. I'm saying Bruce Wayne is Batman. Wow. Um, actually, Batman is the real identity, right? Uh, he calls himself Batman in his own head. Um which is a funny little thing, right? Where it's like, oh, I knew, I knew that wasn't my conscience because I don't call myself Bruce. Um, but the Joker is an impossible character, and I don't think if he's an impossible, I, I think if he's not an impossible character, then I don't think you're, I don't think you're doing the character right. Um, uh, I mean, a- I, absolutely. I, I think, I think he's a stylized version. Of the Hannibal Lecter archetype. Yes, and to for 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 me, one thing about the Joker has to be that he's almost like he he's almost a living cartoon in his uh, willingness to make elaborate traps. Yeah, there there's a great um Joker comic book where like Harley kidnaps Batman and is about to kill him. Um and the Joker like the Joker stops it, right? He like hits her and he stops it and he's like, "No, I'm the one who's supposed to do this. We're doing it my way. It's not that ba- I don't need just I just I don't need Batman dead. I need to kill Batman. Like that's his thing." Yeah, uh God, that just makes me think of the uh, the episode where they're playing poker and telling stories about how they almost got Batman, the old the animated Batman the animated uh-huh. series, and uh, Killer Croc gets up there and tries to tell his story of how he almost killed Batman, and it's just I picked up a big rock and I <laughs> threw it at him. That's not the Joker. <laughs> like, so. I think I, I included this prompt, right? And what makes the bat? What makes the Joker? Well, before that, I, I think, I think you also. I don't think the Joker, as he exists in in pop culture today, I don't think he exists in a universe where Batman doesn't exist. It's it's like what Alfred says in The Dark Knight: 
you created this man. You pushed them, and they turned to something they didn't understand. And I think throughout the years, the Joker's intensity, his brilliance, and his violence has has to grow only in response to Batman's abilities. And in a world where Batman's turned into a kind of male fantasy, you know, almost ubermensch, right? The, the, the prep time argument, the Batman prep time argument. I think in a world where comic book writers who were fans of Batman now are now writing Batman and creating him into this insane, unbeatable figure that that is just that is still a man. I, I think the Joker needs to and has as a result continued to become this impossible, impossible villain. Um and I think I think Ledger's Joker was a great response to Bale's Batman, right? In those movies where Christian Bale's Batman was just so good at his job. He's beating these criminals to the point where they're meeting in like broad daylight in kitchens of restaurants. And and then as a result, like the Joker comes along and he's just he's incredibly good at his job. Uh, but in all of this <laughs> is to counteract to this 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 latest Todd Phillips film where they're trying to give an origin for the Joker in a world where Batman doesn't exist. Well, the Joker can't be a figurehead in a world where Batman doesn't exist, right? Because the criminals don't need to follow somebody in Gotham if there's nobody beating them to a pulp. Am I making sense here, Andy? No, yeah, you're you're very right. Um like I can't the 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 Joker arises because of Batman. The Joker exactly. Yeah. The Joker sees Batman and go or hears about Batman and goes, "Oh, so you can just do whatever the hell you want." Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'm gonna do whatever the hell. I, like literally, he's just like, "I'm going to do what I want," and I'm going to, in in Ledger's case, I'm going to make you like respond to me. Um. And I think the Joker does, and he does it in a very specific way, but I think the comic book Joker's aim is the same. I want you to respond to me, and I want you to respond to me, and then in that moment, I want to kill you, right? I want to outsmart you, and then I want to kill you. And I think that's what that's what Ledger's Joker's also trying to do. Right. I, so there's a thing that hardcore Batman fans do, or at least did, that really annoyed me is, you know, you bring up Batman, you're talking, and then... You, it inevitably comes to like, oh well, could Batman beat blank? And you know, could Batman beat up the Green Lantern? And it's like, well, of course he could. He's the goddamn Batman, right? And that kind of it, you know, you know, it annoys me because there's no, there's no actual talking about this, but also, it that also can apply to the Joker. If you give the Joker enough prep time, he, I think he can do anything Batman can do. Yeah, and you know what makes the Joker so scary is that he lives in each one of us. <laughs> it's that the Joker has no responsibility and no sense of virtue. And so the reason why Batman, you know, for example, Batman can't like just beat anybody is because he has to protect Gotham City, right? Whoa, the whoa, reason whoa. why he can't Hold on. All right. The stop, Joker stop. has one one thing he will not do, and that is he will not not punch a Nazi. <laughs> that was that was the worst. The Batman Captain America thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like I might be a criminal, but I'm an American criminal. Like, shut up. The Joker would not care about Nazis. Um, and it's not to you, Andy. Of course, it's right, just the know, writers of that comic. Um, and so I think about this a lot. Like, could Deathstroke? Could the you know, could could all these guys maybe kill Batman? Yeah, probably, but they're they're busy doing other things. Like, could could Batman go out and and beat Superman? Like, well, if he had this insane, elaborate setup, but Batman is constantly protecting his town, his city from whatever it is that's happening in Gotham City, and the Joker out of nowhere could be scheming and just show up. And you know, if you've read Injustice, like spoiler alert, bounce, you know. 30 seconds like kill Lois Lane and drive Superman insane right he could just do it um and in a weird way the reason why the Joker is not 
wreaking havoc upon the DC universe is because he is so fixated on the one person he can't do it to, and it's the Batman. Right. Also, uh, Ariel, your your description of the Joker just kind of showing up, that's something that in the comics the Joker does quite a bit. Like there's, you know, entire stories go by without the Joker, and all of a sudden the Joker just kind of pops in and either gets beaten or does something terrible like he did in um what is what it what it what it the the comic uh Warzone. Where Warzone? He, you're right, where he just pops up and kills Gordon's wife. Oh, uh No Man's Land. No Man's Land, there we go. You're right, and and he's so chaotic. Right? If Bane did that, you'd be like, come on. Like, if Penguin did that, you'd be like, why are you shooing this in? But, like, when the Joker does it, it's perfect. Right? He waits until he can create the utmost chaos. At least when he's written properly. Right? Written well. He waits until he can create chaos. He enters. He murders somebody. And then he leaves. Like, he just doesn't. Like, he has no rhyme or reason. It's just perfectly built into the lore of the character. Yeah. Um, he really is just kind of like the incarnation of chaos. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've totally... Or perceived chaos, right? Or an agent of chaos. Yeah. yeah. I think he he needs... Like, he needs meticulous planning. He needs structure. And he needs authority in his schemes, in his methods, but his goal is always chaos. And in a weird way, Batman's ability to thrive in chaos, right? His ability to improvise, his um, tactical awareness and strategic mind make it so that Batman doesn't... like. It's really frustrating when people are like, oh, prep time, prep time. But Batman's best comic books are his his best victories are never done with prep time they're done when the villain has the prep time and he is the one operating in chaos and the result is order through it and joker is the inverse he needs order he needs planning he needs structure so that he can create the chaos yeah uh i'm thinking of like all the times that like because Batman's best stories, like I, I will always say, are when there's just a gauntlet of villains. And right. And there's no there's no planning. There's no planning he could do to account for those scenarios. Right, right, right. He just he just ends up finding you know, one thing and then another thing and another thing. And it's it's multiple days of nonstop action and him not being able to rest or recover, which is how Bane broke him, like that is that is when Batman is, is is at his best. Yes, he has all these plans, but most of the time, the, him having those plans is really just to show how paranoid he is. Yeah, his his plans always go awry, right? Yeah, yeah. I think most of the time his plans don't really work, but it's that that's not the plans aren't a strength of Batman. I don't think. I think that uh, the plans are kind of a weakness of his. Yeah, totally, totally agree in, in this weird way, right? Every time he has these plans, they're always used against him. Um, they're always used as a a, um, a symbol of the mistrust he has with others. Um, but but going back to the Joker, oh yes, we that's right, we're doing this episode. Well, like and and so and so in in the Mad About Movies like Discord group, right? Um, a lot of people are saying that it's not a Batman movie, but the, like it's it's like it's like make taking a it's like making a uh, Boba Fett movie and saying it's not Star Wars. Like you cannot separate to me. Like if you separate everything about ba- like everything connected to Batman from the Joker, it's no longer the Joker. Um, which is I think what Todd Phillips has somewhat done in his characterization. Or has definitely done his characterization. Um, but that film still has Thomas and Martha Wayne and it still has Gotham City and therefore it is a Batman movie. Um, 
I think I think the Joker is. I think you are, we are we are unable to have conversations about the Joker without talking about Batman, and I don't think that's true, vice versa. Obviously, right, right. Uh, yeah, because the Joker is really just one reflection of Batman. Like, ah, oh man, it's so. I mean, people have written their their dissertations and theses on the Joker. Yeah, he's he's an. I think he's a more interesting character in plotting and in fiction than in psychology, because this person doesn't exist in psychology. Oh, and I think that is the downfall of a Joker origin story. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm trying to think. Like, we we do have like hints and and nudges at possible origins for the Joker, but Heath Ledger did it. I think did it best with you know the multiple origins the. You don't know if he's telling the truth. And that's right. a great way to give the Joker a plausible origin story. I think the only thing that would truly make sense is, um, and I won't spoil it here, but the the theory that they posited in, in, in Batman Endgame. I don't know if you read that, Andy. Uh, yes. Uh, I did not read it, but it, in my research, I found that. Right. That is the only like plausible explanation, right? Where it's just like, no, there is no, like, if you look at Joker as a force of nature, that's the only way this character works. Because people, even comic book origins, like, don't end up like this. Even if a man falls into a vat of acid, it's a mutation that turns him like this, not some psychological mental health disorder trigger. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. God, the the so many of Batman's most interesting moments are because of the Joker. Right. It's like responses to what the Joker is trying to do to him and to those he knows. Right. Like of course, uh do you want to hit some of those major plot points? Sure. Um and so here's here's kind of a list a list of the things the Joker has done and and, and we'll we'll posit it through a required reading um for characterizations of the Joker. And I think the first one is uh, the death in the family. Yeah. And this is where on a vote, Jason Todd was decided to be killed. And um, the Joker kidnaps him, like tortures him psychologically, tortures him physically. And then like finally kills him, kills Jason Todd, who was then known as Robin. Um, this is, I think one of the first times like a major superheroes died. Um, it's maybe a little unprecedented that a, a villain of this magnitude was was able to to do this in such a way. What were your thoughts on Death in the Family? Okay, so Death in the Family has a lot of issues with um... sense. Well, it, it has a lot of issues with with being very text heavy. Um, and, uh-huh. and well, that's right. Yeah, that, that's it's it's of a product of its time, uh, and that and that was one of the things that made it kind of boring to read. Uh, or boring yeah, it's to not great. experience. Uh, but yeah, you got a real sense for the brutality that the Joker is capable of. Uh, I do think that, uh, what's his name? Joe DiMaggio's Joker in the uh, animated Red Hood movie is really good when they're showing the bits of death mm-hmm. of the family. More gangster than, than anything. Like a gangster Joker, like a mob Joker. Yeah. Um, another, and I think one of the most important Joker stories is is the Killing Joke. Um, this was meant to be a non continuity story and was folded into continuity. It is one of the most famous DC comic book collections or graphic novels um, of all time. I think it is absolutely worth reading. I don't want to spoil it for those of you who haven't, but it, it is another display of the absolute depravity of the Joker and the impossibility of him as well, I think. Yeah. Um, uh don't watch this. I've heard it I've heard it's it's not good. Oh. It the the problem with the killing joke is you'll be finished in half an hour. They still have to make it a seventy minute animated movie. 
That's tough. That's not a great thing to adapt into to film. I mean, it's it's dark. It's heavy. It's not something I need to see animated or live action, right? Like, yeah, no, no. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely one of the more difficult reads, quite famously. Um, but it, it's not. It, like it's not inappropriate or out of character. It's something that has to be told through page, so that the violence of it can be can be limited, but the impact of it is still there. Right, and and Batman doesn't have a romantic relationship with Batgirl. In terms of the Joker and. And required reading, Andy. Is there anything else? I really think No Man's Land. Okay, No Man's Land is 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 really his appearance, and that's really important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also think uh, White Knight. Okay, that's an interesting non continuity story. Yeah, uh, I don't think it tells you too much about the character, though. Okay, okay. Um, what about some of the newer stuff, like the um death of the family i think it is i didn't i didn't like death of the family at all yeah yeah uh, i thought that was a bad arc in a great run yeah the the joker is i i don't i don't know there there's lots of little things he does that are great but i think if people really want to get an experience of who the joker is watching batman in the animated series is probably the best way to do it yeah yeah, I, I'm not sure if this was in the animated series or in another, in another uh, iteration of the Joker. But there's a great line that he says where he's in Arkham, right? And he's like, he's like, whatever, whatever. I'm breaking out of here tomorrow. And they're like, why didn't you just break out of here earlier? He's like, I'm only in here until it's funny, and it's not funny anymore. Like that's such a great line, right? Where he just rides the wave, and then, right, and then he's just like, you know what? It's not funny anymore, and I'm leaving. Like it's just. You can't you can't figure out what this character is. Yeah, um, and I think that also the um, Batman the animated series movie Mask of the Phantasm does a great job in explaining who the Joker is. It's been so long. I think that we we need to review it, we, Andy. We do, we do. Um, yeah, um, but let's take a look at iterations of the Joker in the past. We'll we'll go chronologically. How about that? Okay. Uh, Caesar Romero. These are, of course, non-comic book versions. Caesar Romero played the Joker in the '60s. He was a largely um, harmless version of the Joker right. in comparison to his uh, other, excuse me, other movie versions and comic book version. Right now, I always try to encourage people to remember that this version of Batman is supposed to be a comedy. It's supposed to be a what? A comedy. Yeah, of course. So the the Joker is largely harmless. Batman is largely um, incompetent in many ways, and, and so it's it's not really a great version. Um, the look is spot on for early Joker, I must say. Yeah. Uh, Cesar Romero, except for that mustache, he just paints over and not shaves for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then we have Jack Nicholson's the Joker, who plays um, a. I, I wrote comic book accurate, and I only mean comic book accurate in the tone of how menacing he is. Okay. What do you, what did you think about Jack Nicholson's Joker? All right. I thought Jack Nicholson's Joker was spot on to a very specific era of Joker. Right. Um, he's terrifying, but he also does things like plays Prince and, uh, just kind of causes havoc. I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the little gag where he pulls the gun out of his pants and it's this giant yeah. gun. Yeah. Little things like that are what I kind of expect in the Joker, right? The Him using things that are completely impractical, I think it reflects both on his insanity and his ability to craft uh, incredible things. I do not dig... Uh. The big uh, Tim Burton alteration to the continuity for this Joker. 
that's that's I think is one of the biggest issues with this. Uh, of course, in the 1989 film, Jack Nicholson's character, Jack Napier, before he becomes the Joker, is the person who kills Thomas and Martha Wayne. Um, so, I don't like that. It's so dumb. It's almost yeah. as dumb yeah, as yeah, taking Vicky Vale to the Batcave. That was pretty bad. Um, there's a lot of things in Batman 1989 that don't hold up. I think in terms of... I think in terms of performance and tone... Maybe not performance. I think in terms of tone and overall, this is my favorite Joker. And there's only two there's only two contenders, right? Um Yeah. I just I just prefer the crazy, like over the top scheme Joker to what we got in Ledger's The Dark Knight. Right, right. And uh yeah, I actually wrote up a little bit about this because I really think that Heath Ledger is pretty much just playing anarchy. Mm-hmm. The C list villain. Uh, I think it's because of the more grounded nature of the Christopher Nolan trilogy, like that we don't get those fun things that the Joker could do. We we don't get to say like, wait a minute, how did he build a uh, a Zeppelin with his face on it? Yeah, but that's like, but that's the Joker, right? Like these crazy things. Um, I think in a, I think in another world. Like Nicholson's Joker and and Keaton's Batman, like maybe with a different director, right? Maybe with a second try at it. Um, I think they nail it, right? I think in another world where we got, you know, like like Birdman, right? Where we got like Batman three and Batman four. Um, I I think, I think that's there. I think that's there in a way that Ledger and Bale's Batman and Joker could never measure up um, because I don't think that Bill, <laughs> I don't think that Bill's Batman. I can't take a, a damn thing. He says seriously in that costume. And I can with Michael Keaton and I can with Jack Nicholson's Joker. Okay. Uh, I see that. I, I am one of the people who stands uh, Batman begins as the best of the trilogy. It, I, it's not a terrible argument, right? I think the dark Knight. The Dark Knight's plotting under any sort of scrutiny is nonsense. Uh, anything in the last 45 minutes is nonsense in that film. Right. It's fun um, nonsense. And No, it's 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 A plus storytelling. Right. But yeah. And speaking of nonsense, we do have the other live action contender. Jared Leto. Oh no. Oh gosh. Mr. So I'm going to mail dead rats to my co-stars and used condoms. Okay. I you you know what? Here here here's something, okay? If you are a method actor and you act like a dick to your coworkers, you're still being a dick. Yeah. Uh there's no question about it. I also wonder how much of this was a publicist? How much of this was you you know trumped up kind of stuff? I yeah, it, it's because it's hard for me to imagine any sensible person like sending used condoms. But it's so so. This is this is the thing, right? I think Jared Leto's Joker and Joaquin Phoenix's Joker are two sides of the same coin. Neither of them understand what the character is. One of them went over the top nonsense and the other one went over the top like serious. But like neither get it. And I think if you look at Ledger and Nicholson, they both they both get it in very different ways, right? Ledger understands that the Joker, or at least Nolan understands that the Joker is a response to Batman and Burton's Joker is, is that like the quintessential over the top, crazy schemes, menacing like Joker, but they're, they're doing different things, but both things are so those are the two most important parts of the character, right? The, the smart, well, they're both smart, but one of them is like he's doing impossible things, and one of them is the escalation of character in response to Batman. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I I really I can't comment on on Joaquin Phoenix's Joker because I haven't seen the movie. Um, I mean, I've I've read enough about the plotting and what happens and and all that. To just I just know that that's not that's not what an origin story for the Joker would look like. Okay. Um, but we should also bring up probably the best Joker. Oh yes, and I will I will fight anyone who says otherwise. But Mark Hamill's run as the Joker to me he is the Joker. Yeah, and I think you are absolutely right. I think he's the best. And see, Kevin Conroy's vocal work as Batman is really great, but Batman is just so much more than like the voice, right? But to me, like it doesn't matter what the Joker looks like. What matters is like delivery and plotting and scheming. And I think he like if you just put him on a stage, I think he nails that. Yeah. Uh I mean that that's the thing. Is Kevin Conroy I uh, also to me he is the Batman, but Mark Hamill, like listening to him just do the Joker voice, like he you can almost hear him dancing around when the Joker is dancing around. And the, the, you can, like, thinking about him, I hear the song. And, like, he's got that 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 laugh. Yeah. That laugh that goes from, like, joyous to menacing. And I can hear the difference when he's speaking, you know, when he's talking to Harley and he's being light and he's being charming. But then... There's so much rage in that voice that, and it and the rage makes you fearful. Not, you know, even even Ledger's rage, it sounded too much like Batman. Oh, look at me, right? Like, remember that? Yeah, in yeah. the video, like people were like, "Oh, it's so good." It was like that was like the worst. I just didn't care about that part. I think when when Hamill is doing rage, it's it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's very much uh, like I'm going to not just end you. I'm going to end everything about you and everyone you've ever loved. Like it's terrifying. And, yeah, he's it's it's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, I so I just don't think. Plus, he's I mean he's been playing the Joker for seventeen plus years. Yeah, I, the Arkham Arkham Asylum Joker. Cause, cause he looks more menacing and he's more, looks more realistic. Um, that's also a great, it's also Mark Hamill, of course. Yeah. But that's also a great version of him. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I really can't wait to whenever we do our playthrough of those. Yeah. Well, I mean, Arkham's free right now. We actually should, we should do it soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've got them all. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Me too. Uh, so your favorite Joker is, of course, Ledger. Well, both of ours is Hamill, and I think he's untouchable. Um, I think so, but most people wouldn't. Most people would say Ledger. I, I I like Nicholson better. Like you said, like Ledger's just not – he's not perfectly the Joker. That performance is amazing, like legit Oscar-worthy. There's nothing to to say negative about that performance in general. Uh, but ultimately, I just don't know how much how how great of a Joker uh, he is. Um, right. But let's talk about those two those two actors really quick in a, in a really quick geek royalty before we sign off here. Uh, Jack Nicholson, his three roles um, were, I guess, geeky kind of are The Shining, of course, the Joker in Batman and in <laughs> Mars Attacks. Um, do you think he's he's worthy of geek royalty? <laughs> he can get right in line with Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. I think he has a geek royalty worthy performance, but I definitely don't think he he hits the um the mark. That performance is not good enough to to vault him in there alone. Uh how about Heath Ledger? Um, you know what? No. I got to agree with you. So the things that might be considered geeky are The Dark Knight, of course. The Patriot is a period piece. A Knight's Tale, I would definitely I would definitely consider geeky. 
Um, but ten things I hate about you is a, is a Shakespearean retelling. I just don't think those things are are geeky enough. And um, I absolutely maybe in another love world. Ten things I hate about you, by the way. Okay, I, I haven't seen it. It is but. it is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't quite think he makes it. Unfortunately, he just didn't do enough uh, at the end of the day. There. Um, all right, Andy. Last thing: Why is the Joker idolized? Okay. Here's here's my um of course this is my opinion. I think that there's a certain type of person who wants to believe that they are a sociopath, who wants to believe that they are better than emotions, etc. And they want to you you know think that the Joker is such a the perfect example of that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, God. Yeah. I. I can only guess that it's 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 something like that. Like like the Joker is the epitome of something. He's the epitome of villainy. He's the, you know, the most unsympathetic villain. If, it, you know, people like that. If if that does that make any sense, Ariel? Yeah, it is exactly what makes Rick from Rick and Morty so popular. Where the point of the character of Rick is that he's a real a-hole and a real jerk. And that he is so incredibly lonely and broken that he does all these crazy things to get away from just having a conversation with a therapist about how lonely and broken he is. And yet people idolize him for the negative qualities. Um, I think for the Joker, you're right. People, people think they are this special um, sociopath. They latch onto it. And it's really, it's really, really frustrating to see the amount of like Joker cosplays at cons. And it's not just the Joker cos, like when they go around and in, in, in their Joker cosplays and they're like, they're like being like animated series Joker, right? Where you were like, Mark Hamill, you know, was in on the joke. Um, and I just don't know if Heath Ledger was. He just tried going real dark with it. And like, so the guys who like stand around looking really serious and try to look menacing as the Joker, like that makes me uncomfortable because you're looking at the wrong things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's, I, yeah, I just, I just think that there's also a, a line of thought in certain people that says something along the lines of, well, I'm never going to be the hero. So yeah, I you yeah. you know, the the villain is also the coolest. You know, uh, I might have talked about this earlier, but someone once told me like, name your favorite Batman villain who's not the Joker, and it tells you something about yourself, right? Right, right, exactly. Uh, and I completely agree with that. I think we're attracted to things. A lot of people are attracted to things that uh, and villains that show little bits of of them but the joker is just the epitome of so many different things and you can project so many uh thoughts and motivations onto this character yeah i I think you're absolutely right because batman is the epitome of the loner hero and you project right on onto that what you will batman's perfect right batman has prep time and the Joker is just a villainous version of that. And I, I think if you combine that, like you said, with the with the also, you know, also the fact that people don't see themselves as heroes, you get an idolization of the Joker. Interesting. Yeah. All right. I think we figured it out, Andy. We solved it. Yep. Next um, up, world peace. World peace, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just weird that like people don't idolize like Hannibal Lecter. And the Joker's just as bad. Perhaps worse. Uh, <laughs> it's just so. I, I think it's because he's against Batman. Is really what it is. Um, and he's, right. Well, yeah, he's the only villain on. that you know people think could do something long-lasting to Batman. Right. 
Like, Bane, yeah, he broke the Batman's back, but the Joker has been consistently there to fuck up Batman's life, to fuck up the citizens of Gotham. He's yeah, unpredictable, <laughs> and he's just always there. You know what's the least realistic thing about the Joker existing in Gotham City? Hmm. No one's just shot him, <laughs> you know? No one's just no one's just shot the like all the villains and all the heroes and all the cops are afraid of the Joker, and no one's <laughs> shot him in the face. <laughs> this is why the Joker doesn't exist in Marvel. Because if a villain of this caliber existed in Marvel, the Punisher would walk up to him and shoot him in the face. You want to see it's a really magic trick, fr- right? It's really frustrating that nobody just does it because like, uh. It makes sense, that, like Dark Side, right? Is this it, or Dark Side or like Lex Luthor, right? Lex Luthor it makes perfect sense that nobody can put away Lex Luthor. Why? Because he's rich. You can't even shoot him, right? The Joker is just this crazy guy who walks around and everybody's pointing guns everywhere. And at no point when he is captured, a cop in the corrupt city of Gotham just shoots him in the face. Oh gosh, I hate the Joker sometimes. Um, it's it, it's it's much like the internet. He's evolved to a point where I think it's not a net positive. Mm. Uh, so I said it, Andy. So next week we're reviewing the Joker, right? Or Joker, <laughs> the Joaquin Phoenix movie. <laughs> no, no, we're not. Maybe you can if you want, but I'm not talking about that movie in my podcast. No, I'm not. Rather, I'm not. I'm not watching it. I'm not giving it my time. Um, we talked about it, but whatever. <sighs> okay. Um, so I think we all agree. Mark Hamill, best Joker. Hold on. Let's let's hear from the audience. Okay. Yep, they agree. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Hamill, best Joker. Uh before we sign off, Andy, what is um actually what are what are we doing next week? We are going to be reviewing Gendry Tartakovsky's Primal. I think it's I think it's Gen Gendy? Maybe. Gendy. Gendy. Okay. Yes. We are going to be reviewing Tartakovsky's Primal. The <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Yeah. See? Uh, just skip it. Oh, hmm. did you know that Tartakovsky animated and directed the Hotel Transylvania trilogy? Yes, I did. I did not know that. Yeah. Huh. That's why we haven't been getting a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. Oh, I mean... Let the man make his money, you know? Well, I I think that's one of the reasons we got Samurai Jack. Like the um, the, the season five. Okay. I'm going to attempt to rewatch most of Samurai Jack in the time from this week to next week. Oh, God. It's not... There's not a lot. It's actually very doable. Right. So. But I, I have a... Also, I, I do... I really... Really need to stress this. We are not reviewing the Nicolas Cage movie that's coming <laughs> out called Primal, which is about a hunter and collector of rare and exotic animals bags a priceless white jaguar for a zoo. He figures it'll be smooth sailing to a payday, but the ship bearing Frank's precious cargo has two predators caged in its hold, the cat and a political assassin. <laughs> that That is a real movie. When I typed in Primal, that is coming out in November. Uh, okay, we're not talking about that. We are talking about the uh, Tartakovsky TV series that is dropping all at once on what what platform? It, adultswim.com. Uh, okay, adultswim.com. Right. Uh, it's it one is, episode is airing every night. Okay, it'll be completely done by then. Um, it's about like a primal human caveman dinosaur type story. Um. But yes, we will be doing that. Before we sign off, though, we do have homework. So Andy, why don't you tell us what your homework is for this week? Okay. My homework for this week is to watch Tartakovsky's Primal. <laughs> Very nice. Sorry, I got I got Very nothing nice. this week. Oh, wait. No, wait. Uh, the Batwoman pilot aired for the CW. Ah, it was certainly... A pilot. Yes, yes. It is very much a pilot, but you know what? Give it a watch. First of all, um, reading the IMDb reviews of Batwoman has uh, has made me want to make sure that this mo- that this show gets as many viewers as possible. 
Okay. Um, oh yeah. 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 Uh, but it. I mean, it's it's the start of something. It looks cool. Plus, uh, Batman fans will know what it means when Luke Fox is in it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. My homework this week is a book I picked up. I haven't read it yet, but I trust that I will enjoy it. It is The Rise of Kiyoshi. It is a uh, licensed book about Avatar Kiyoshi from the Avatar The Last Airbender series. Okay. Uh, okay. The The author here, I'm looking it up, is F.C. Yi. She is a, um, I'm assuming an Asian American yeah, he is an Asian American artist, uh, artist writer, excuse me. Um, and he also, I also got a free book from the store. I got it from a New York Comic Con called Epic Crush of Genie Low. So I'm interested in reading this Avatar the Last Airbender story. Um, that is one of the greatest, I think, TV shows ever. So, um, so yeah, try, try more third, you know, try more licensed books. I think they're getting better and better writers to tackle licensed material right uh no is it like a is is not a comic book it's a no it's a novel wow okay interesting interesting yeah. I, i'm really looking forward to whenever netflix gets around to making that live action avatar yeah there there is so much about avatar kiyoshi that is hinted at in the in the show but never really explored and i think this is a cool opportunity to do that Totally. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Andy, where can we find you online? You can find me online. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I am uh, okay. sorry. People who have subscribed to the feed have probably noticed that I've been doing a solo series called Road to Arrowverse Crisis. If you are a fan of the CW Arrowverse show like me, please join me and my much, much smarter friends, Tessa and Sam, as we go through season by season the CW Arrowverse universe. All right, make sure to do that. But before that, yeah. oh, after, since since I'm working, they uh, find you, you find online. me online on Twitter at Hebrews Paleo. All right, you can find me at Dread Pirate Roddy. You can find us at Geek One Hundred One Podcast on Twitter and Facebook and Patreon. Email us Geek One Hundred One at Gmail dot com. That's all we have for today. Class dismissed. Thank you.